Hello one for person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery coming from the region where Beetlejuice is located. Well, technically a little bit farther away from there. The so-called Orion Molecular Cloud Complex. This is where a lot of new stars are being made right now and we've discovered something really interesting there. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So by now you probably already know that Beetlejuice did not go supernova, it did not explode, and this is kind of something we've expected. It's now actually even brightening, so in that sense, for now at least, it's no longer interesting to us. But there are other things in this region that are really interesting. Specifically, not so far away from Beetlejuice, or technically where Beetlejuice was originally formed, is the so-called molecular cloud known as the Orion molecular cloud. This is sort of what it looks like in real life, this is an actual picture taken by the Hubble telescope, and this is where a lot of new stars are being formed pretty much on a regular basis every single year from all of the dusty material present here, and then begin their lives as actual star systems. And because we're so interested in finding out how all of these stars generate, and most importantly, in understanding how planets then form from these new stars, this is where a lot of scientists try to investigate many different secrets of the universe. And so in one of their recent studies, that as always you can find in the description below, the scientists were looking at this molecular cloud and they discovered something really interesting. They discovered what I guess you would call a baby star, or not even a baby technically, an embryo star. An object that will become a star relatively soon, but is not a star just yet. And this is technically our first discovery of such objects. Now today we have a pretty good grasp on understanding how planets form and how stars form, but it's still not really perfect. For example, we know that all of the star systems and all of the planetary systems start from this somewhat familiar to us planetary disk. We've seen this in a lot of different star systems and pretty much all of them more or less look the same, or at least very, very similar. They all have the same properties, they all seem to progress through the same similar steps, and thus we believe this is exactly how our own solar system was born as well. It started as a kind of a cloud, then coalesced into a disk-like formation, and then eventually when the star in the middle became active and became an actual nuclear reactor, it sort of expelled a lot of the dust, and whatever was left over became planets. And some of the larger planets like Jupiter and Saturn may have even been created before the star became active. But we don't really have a very good understanding of what happens right before that. Specifically the process of molecular cloud to disk formation. And one of the main reasons is because a lot of the younger stars are basically just clouds of dust and it's really difficult to see through them. Whatever is happening in the middle is almost impossible for us to see with a regular telescope and even with a more advanced radio telescope. And so only some of the more advanced telescopes like the so-called ALMA telescope, which is one of the most advanced radio telescopes we have, are able to actually even discern what's happening in these clouds. Because there are 66 telescopes connected as a kind of a radio station, they're able to pierce through a lot of dust and see what's hiding behind all of the dust generated by the formation of baby stars. Now what did the scientists discover? Well, the good news here is that they discovered several different stars in different periods of their formation, and they were able to thus compare them to our actual theoretical knowledge. For example, one of the stars has already undergone a collapse and is now becoming a kind of a opaque central region with something in the middle. Once again, not a star yet, but an object that's about 170 degrees Kelvin in temperature, which is, um, I guess, about minus 100 degrees Celsius, pretty cold, but much warmer than just regular vacuum. So something is already going on in the middle there. They also discovered an object that does not have any emissions yet, but the temperature on the inside is already much higher. And by the way, the names of these objects are right here above them. They then discovered another object where the outflow has already begun because of the way that the star starts spinning. And we expect all of the new stars to have these protrusions or these outflows as a lot of matter gets expelled from two directions as essentially things start spinning. We obviously see these pretty much everywhere in the universe including black holes, neutron stars, white dwarfs and so on, but even early stars have them as well. And the last object even started to have some sort of a disk in the middle and a much stronger outflow, but also a lot more dust that's uh, blocking the view as well. In other words, they discovered four different eras of a formation of a typical star, which will eventually result in this, which is of course what all of these protoplanetary disks that we have here that we've seen everywhere in the galaxy pretty much look like on the inside. 
And at least one of these objects even had a potential partner that's being formed with it that will either become a binary system or maybe have some sort of a very large super Jupiter-like object orbiting with it or possibly even a brown dwarf. But since this is just the beginning of these stars being formed, it will still take millions of years for them to become anything similar to what our sun looks like, much longer to become an actual mature star, and possibly even up to a billion years to become a stable star system with planets in stable orbits. This study also reveals uh, the average size and the mass of these objects, and on average they have a mass of about similar to what our sun has. Obviously, they will probably decrease in mass as they grow because a lot of the material will be expelled, but this also means that they might become either red dwarfs or somewhat small G-type or K-type stars. And in terms of the actual size, you'll see here that the uh, average size is about 1000 to maybe 1200 astronomical units, this here being equivalent to about 30 times the distance to Pluto. So these are really, really large objects, but they will obviously become more compact as they grow. And one of the interesting discoveries here is that even though on average all of these younger stars appear to be the same in size as older stars, they seem to be also a lot more massive, which suggests that they do lose a lot of mass as they grow, probably through various violent emissions that occur right here. Now this was probably how most of the younger stars lose their mass, but there could be other effects as well, we just don't really know what they are yet. And although the typical older star will look somewhat perfect in terms of the actual shape, it will be almost a perfect ring, all of these younger stars were a lot more blobby and a lot less predictable in terms of the shape. So even though most of them end up somewhat perfectly ring-shaped, they do start as completely irregular and unpredictable shapes, before becoming something like this. But even though right now we don't really have many more answers about this observation, there's going to be a lot of follow-up studies that will probably answer a lot more questions. One thing discovered so far is that we now understand that this whole process of, I guess, the cloud-like formation into the early protoplanetary disk takes a few thousand years. We always uh, were kind of curious, how long does it actually take for a star to go through all of these stages? Some scientists suggested that it's a very fast process, possibly a few hundred years, but some scientists thought it was maybe a few thousand years. And it looks like just judging by what we've seen so far, it does take at least 6,000 or so years to go from this to possibly this and eventually become a protoplanetary disk that then leads to an active star that then acquires planets as well. And one of the reasons they think it takes so much longer is because of various magnetic interactions as the actual disk starts spinning around and producing a lot of rotational and magnetic effects. So as the star starts collapsing, it actually, because of the spin, starts living a little bit longer and takes a little bit longer to actually acquire this beautiful disk-like shape. And so even though a lot of people were disappointed that Betelgeuse did not produce the light show we expected it to, the other discoveries coming from the Orion system are also pretty exciting. Unfortunately, all of the news about Betelgeuse kind of covered other excitement about the Orion clouds, which is why I decided to talk about this paper as well, because this discovery is pretty interesting. But unfortunately, for now, that's really all we know about these new stars, and that's all we've learned from this particular study. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, so do subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting our channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also wearing right now as well. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.